So, we are the last bit of our polymorphism, and actually this is the last bit of our foundation, which would be considered uh, the, the basics or the foundation of programming. Uh, and again, uh, this is one school of practice uh, where we're talking about OOP and so on, and there's a lot of different variations and different schools of practice to go to, uh, but for now this is perfectly fine, and we're covering pretty much like 80% of all the jobs out there. Uh, this is the end of that foundation. And that foundation ends with polymorphism. And the last bit of the polymorphism is abstract and interface. So we're going to go through that. And I'm going to think of an example as we're doing this because uh, so far we've been using courses, assignments, students, teachers. And to be honest, we don't need this abstract or interface, but it's going to help us make more uh, more use of the poly polymorphism method of uh, this technique that we're using. Uh, the first one is let's talk about abstract. So if we notice over here in our application, uh, let's say this this project is about school and whatnot. There is really no need to create this person. Well, there is one need is the inheritance. So make sure the code that's being repeated, the fields that's being mentioned multiple times, being used only once and only inside the parent class, which in this case is person. But there is no need to create a person inside of our project, inside of a school environment, person should not exist. Person should only be either a student, a teacher, or administrator or whatever else that we specify that's within the ecosystem of a school so in this case I still want to have person because it gives me a lot of shared uh, attributes a lot of shared functionalities uh, a lot of shared actions but at the same time I don't want people in this case let's go to where was it our main and I don't want people to be able to create a person so they shouldn't be able to do new person right so let's see if we have an example somewhere well whatever we'll just create it ourselves so they shouldn't be able to do this person um, so soon to be student I don't know let's say and they do new person and inside here we give it a first name and a last name Okay, they shouldn't be allowed to do this because person is a meaningless uh, entity inside of our project. Assignments, course, gender, all of these things, student, teacher, specialty, all of this is meaningful to us. But a person creating that object is meaningless to us. It shouldn't be able to create it. You should be able to inherit from it but not be able to create it. Okay. So comes in this class we call abstract. Okay, so let's go back to person over here. And <clears throat> we're gonna keep the word final there. But come in this new class, well this new term we call abstract. And the first thing, the first rule about an abstract, actually I don't know where to put this, let's put it here. The first thing to note about an abstract class is that you cannot instantiate it. And this is important. So again, coming back to here, you'll notice now it's saying, hey, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. You could have constructors because I still need to be created, but you cannot directly create me. You could make me part of something by inheritance, but you could never create me directly. So in this case, we're making sure that no one uses person as a normal object that they could use throughout their application. Okay, any questions? So this is the first thing. The second thing is within our abstract class, notice that we already, actually we're gonna delete this happy thing, you don't need that. Notice that we already defined a lot of attributes that belongs to person. And we define a few constructors, actually three of them. And we define a lot of um, a 
lot of functions. We define them by giving them a body and saying what it does exactly. But we could also have this thing that we call an abstract method. An abstract method, what's interesting about it, is that whoever inherits person must define it. So let's say, give you an example. So what can we do here? We have person, uh, we have student, teacher. Um, let's say when I talk, as an example, <clears throat> I'm gonna create a abstract method. So I'm gonna specify the word abstract. I'm gonna say void talk. And notice this difference. Even though I defined the function signature, the method signature, I do not define the body. I could, but because I said abstract and because I don't want to define it, I just put a semicolon. Okay, and what it's gonna do, it's gonna enforce, well, it's gonna require that whoever inherits person that they would need to define this, right? So in this case, set, height, and all of this, get last name, height, it's always gonna be the same thing for anyone that inherits it. It's always gonna be first name, last name, and so forth, so on. But when someone talks, as an example, well, that's gonna be a bit different from a student or from a teacher, right? So it's something that I do not wanna define, I do not wanna build, I do not wanna mention the body of it inside person but i want to uh, make sure that anyone that inherits from person they define that talk before being used so let's go inside students notice that now we have an error and the error if we put our mouse over it, it says class student must either be declared abstract or implement abstract method talk so either we could continue the chain and make this also an abstract class, okay? Or we could go and define the class that we're missing. So to define the class we're missing, we could do two, two ways. Well, uh, we could use the IDE, which you do control uh, O, and you would find the functions talk here, which you require. Okay, or you could type it out yourself. Either way, control O does it. So, notice it's again overriding, right? But the function signature must stay the same. Gee, sorry, one second, my cat is meowing at me. What? Okay, my cat's back at its own thing. Um, so we have to override that function. And again, this override is really just there for compile compilation, right? So no errors. The annotation is there just to give us a compile time error if we misspell this and we write talk. Oh, sorry, my cat was jumping on me. There we go. So over here, the talk, we want to override it. Uh, we already did that. Okay, so we want to override it and say what happens during the talk. So in this case, uh, this is, who are we talking about? Let's click it here. This is our student. So I have a question. And inside teacher, we'll also have to enforce that rule, which is we need to implement all the abstract methods, in this case, this. So another way we could do it is just clicking implement methods, all right? But that brings it here. I kind of like my functions to be together. Anyway, and inside there, let's say I say C out, uh, I am, I teach, I don't know, whatever, right? Any questions so far? So the cool part about an abstract methods, it could have uh, functions that are defined, right? We fill it in, well actually this is the wrong one. We have uh, functions that are fully done, or we have abstract functions, abstract methods, that must be defined by whoever inherits this. Okay, so it does a couple things. So first of all, it cannot be instantiated. It can define fields and, 
and uh, methods. It can also define abstract method signatures. And this is important because these methods that are abstract, okay, the body, actually, the, rather than define, it could, um, can, I don't know, define. Uh, then what happens is whoever inherits from this, inheritors must uh, implement the body. So must implement the functionality. Okay, so we're creating a rule. And why would we want to do this rule? Uh, fun, can't spell anything, the functionality. So th this is creating a rule for the classes that are being created. And these rules are important. And you're going you're gonna to see this when we come into, let's say, uh, we go into graphics and whatnot, or we go to Android. Actually, let me see if I could open a project here. As an example, I just want to show you a quick one. We're not going <clears> to <throat> delve in it too far. I'm going to come back to this. So the only difference between an abstract class and a non-abstract class is you cannot instantiate an abstract class. And all the inheritors, whoever inherits from an abstract class, must implement whatever is abstract in there. And why would we want to do this? It's because when we get into the bigger project, so let's say this Android as an example, let me go full screen again. Uh, if we go into this uh, this application, so this is one of my students uh, submitted a movie application. Uh, anyway, the fact is, when we go into these bigger projects and whatnot, you will never have access to, let's say as an example, you won't have access to the main function the entry point to our application doesn't well it's not given to us it exists somewhere but it's not given to us if we go to main activity it's some code but you'll notice that nowhere in here there is a main function and what you'll notice a lot of times is it's everything's gonna be extending something everything's gonna be inheriting something and they do, they do this for some big reason the big reason is inside main, the only thing that's going on, it's there's an infinite loop. And inside that infinite loop, it's going to call these specific functions, right? Well, this one especially, the one that's overridden. This one is his own function. This one that's being overridden, it's a function that it requires. So it doesn't know what you're going to build. So it didn't know you're going to build this main activity. But it knew for a fact that you're going to have a on create. So we could call the on create without knowing that you're gonna uh, make it or not. Well, it knows you will make it because you're extending this uh, thing. So give you an example of how their main activity would look like. Let's say if I create it here as, as an example. And let's say this is main. Okay, it's not part of anything. And inside there, there is the void main, okay? What's going on inside, let's say Android, Usually you won't have access to this. What's going on in the background is there's a big while loop that's happening. And it's going through everything you do. So for any objects you create, it's going to add it automatically by reflection by these techniques that are a bit higher level. You're going to add those things into a list of, let's say, activities. activities. And you, you can see there's a lot of classes given to us. So it's going to have a list of these activities. Let's say uh, we learn ArrayList, right? So we're going to use that one. Okay, and list to display, let's say, as an example. And again, it doesn't really know what's in there. The fact is, this is during for it that's been designed and whatnot. It doesn't know how many activities you're going to have. It doesn't know... Uh, how are they and etc. The only thing he knows is for each activity that you have in there, as you add them, it's gonna add it to this list. Okay, however it does that. And then it's gonna go through that list and call each of them. So let's say for, as an example, for each activity that I have, as an example again, I'm not sure if this is gonna work out well or not. We're just trying it out. 
So for each activity it has, it's gonna call these specific functions that it made sure that you're gonna have. So in this case, we had a function, let's go look at his activity. We had a function called on create. So inside there, it's gonna call on create. And he knows you have this, and it's gonna pass in whatever values he needs to, and etc. Okay, in this case, I can't, I don't have anything, but yeah. Here we go. Okay. And then it's gonna go through each one of those and call the on create, and then call the next method that he needs to call, and it's gonna go in the rotation, and it's gonna do this infinitely. And this is how your Android OS is running stuff, doing things, etc. Okay? And this is how the bigger pictures goes. So now we will never ever have uh, access to the main, well, in, in this specific environment in Android, but our application is still gonna function correctly because it set a bit of rules. For everything you create, you must make sure you inherit from activity, and when you inherit from activity, it's gonna force you to implement on create. You're not allowed to not implement it. Right, so if we go on create on the activity part, <clears throat> it's gonna force you to create. This is a bit more. We're gonna, gonna anyway. It's gonna force you to create these functionalities given to you, right? And this is what we're trying to do with the abstraction that we have here. We're saying we don't know what type of person he's gonna create, but whatever type of person you're gonna create, we're gonna give you first name, last name, gender, height, and age. We're gonna give you a few constructors so you could build a person without knowing everything or knowing something. We're gonna give you some getters and some setters to change values need be or get the values as you require. But you must make sure you define talk because talk will vary based off if it's a student, a teacher, administrator, if it's my boss, he could just talk to me at any moment, call me in the middle of my session, tell me, hey Reza, you need to stop this, your voice is annoying, right? And I'll have to listen. So because person doesn't know exactly how the talk is gonna be, is enforcing all the inheritors to define it. And this is where the abstract comes in. Cool? So we're kinda enforcing a rule. So now inside main, we can't create person because it's abstract. But let's say that example we had here, Whichever one I get, either being teacher or student, I'll know for a fact that, let's say here again, this, uh, we, we could do selected creation dot talk. So, is it, uh, da, 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 da. so here we're going to make it public. Okay. Dot talk. Right? So may produce no pointer because this, if the choice is not one or two, it could produce a null, right? So this, that's the part, but we could ignore that. So again, let's call that function just to see how it works. So now, based on the user's choice, if it's a teacher or a student, again, we're, we're not validating if the input is correct or anything. Uh, uh, we gotta fix all the other stuff that we made can't do this anymore, we can't do this anymore. This is why you shouldn't do everything in one little sample code. Um, talk over here is, ah, don't forget we gotta put public and we gotta do the same thing for teacher. Okay, remember to put your accessor at all times. And let's try this again. So which one do you want? We want teacher. I teach. We want students. We make sure that they implement the function that we require. Cool. And that's pretty much abstract. The only thing it does is basically a rule that specifies two or three things. Any questions? So that's the first one. We're at the end, again, it's to, to allow us polymorphism. In this case, abstractions comes down to giving us rules. Uh, let's put that here, actually. It's to 
create rules. Right. Now, the next class, let's say, which one do I want to create here? Uh, so we have person, some students, etc. The next one, um, hmm. aha, okay, the next one, da, 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 da. okay, the next one is, oh, by the way, uh, to use an abstract, to inherit from it, you just do, again, extends, right? The next one is much more interesting. Let's create a new class here. Let's create a new class, and we're going to call it annoying, okay? And this is something I excel at. I'm really annoying. The next one that we're talking about is not an abstract class, and it's not a normal class. This class is an interface class. Okay, an interface is a bit different from abstract, but really close to it. <clears throat> the first thing is, to make it into an interface, we would just say interface, right? Easy stuff. You'll notice the icon will also change. The first thing is, interface, just like the abstract, you cannot create it. So let's go back to main for a second. And let's say we want to create a annoying object. Annoying equals new annoying. And you'll notice it's going to tell us, hey, uh, you're doing something else. And it's going to, well, this part is it's trying to create me. Sorry. It's trying to create something else. Uh, that was an anonymous class, but we could ignore that. If you look here, it's saying, just like the interface, annoying is abstract and you cannot create it. Annoying is again a rules or a set of rules, a set of rules to use. The difference between interface and abstract is an interface you cannot have any implementation of any sort. So here, we do not need to say this method is abstract because it will never allow us to do something like this. This is illegal. Why? Because you're trying to mention, <coughs> you're trying to mention uh, what talk should be. Okay, in interface, we're saying that there is a talk, but you're never gonna implement it. You're never gonna give the body. Okay, so no, body so here we could say talk semicolon and this is fine second problem is everything by default is going to be public so you do not need to mention public private or any of those it's not your job it's whoever implements it they decided at that point okay secondly any attributes any field you put in here are going to become constants. So if I put an int, uh, I don't know, uh, int or let's say um, level of annoyance, and we put 24, well, again, because you cannot create, you cannot create the public interface annoying, this belongs to the class, so this is by default static. As you cannot create any instance of this uh, object. Does that make sense? This is the same as saying, uh, the same as saying public, static, final, int level of annoyance. Same stuff. Again, because we can't create that object. Any questions so far? So because we could have constant stuff, such as, again, because we can't create this, right? We could only have static things. And if we could have static things, it also means we could have public st static void uh, shared so yeah, yeah shared talk 
and this would be fine. Why? Because it's static. It's not part of any instance of an object. We cannot create an instance of a knowing, but we could have as much static stuff as we want in there because they don't belong to any instances of anything. Right? Anything else like this, default to abstract. This is the same. Can't spell. Abstract. Abstract. There we go. This is the same as saying abstract void talk that we would see inside um, an abstract class. Anyone has any questions? Okay. Mm, we could go a bit further. No, this is fine. Now, why would we use an interface and why would we use an abstract? Well, you saw the, the differences. Again, same as cannot, let me just put some rules here, cannot create an instance of it. You cannot have any implementation of any sorts, so no body, unless, unless it's a static, so only statics. Um, So everything that is not static is abstract. Now you would say, why would you have interfaces? Well, unlike abstract, well, let's just get the quick definition uh, out of the way, the abstract versus interface. Inter abstract, you would have things that are not static things that are implemented, right? This is the first big difference. Secondly, you could rule, you could use the rule is a in here. Inherit, inherit when you say, when you can say is a. Such as Student is a person. Everyone with me so far? Inside an interface, though, a student is not annoying. A student could be annoying. This is the big difference. So annoying is not something we are, but we could have it, right? So a good example of this is a teacher could be annoying. A police officer could be annoying. It's not that they are by definite rules, it's that they could be because of whatever thing. So this is less of a is a and more of a saying has or not has, uh, could be, let's say. So teacher could be annoying. Police officer could be annoying. It's kind of is a, but it's not the same ish. Ish. You're gonna you're gonna understand this better. Actually, um, if you probably Google it, you'll find go find a good conversation about this. You'll understand better. This this is the hard part anyway. And again, we want to do this because well, first of all, uh, inheritance. This is something I probably didn't mention, and if I didn't, I'm mentioning it now. Inheritance. Where is it? Inheritance is unique. So you can only have one inheritance inside Java. I'm writing Java there because depending on your language, you could have multiple inheritance and so forth and so on. Okay? So inside Java, you can only have one inheritance. So all things must only have one part that says extends. You can't have extends person, comma, annoying. You can't do that. Okay, you can't have multiple inheritance. Even though object is being inherited downwards, usually one of your class is taking care of that. So let's say the way they do it, we're, we're not gonna talk about it, but if you think about it a bit, uh, so let's say here teacher is inheriting from person, well person is the one inheriting from object, which you don't see, and then you inherit from person. But with interfaces, we could have as many interfaces as we want. The only thing you gotta say is we're implementing all of that code. So implements 
annoying. So a teacher is going to be annoying. Right? So right now we have, um, let's go back to annoying Java. So right now we have a void talk. And you'll notice, you'll notice over here, even though it implements annoying, there's nothing that forces me to implement that annoying. Something else that's different from uh, abstract. Okay, so I could again do control O, see what I'm inheriting. So we have person. Mm. Oh, sorry, this is control I. No, control O. Why am I not seeing it? Actually, we should have been forced to implement this. This should have been good. What is going on? What did I make a mistake? Annoying, this is good. Oh, it's talk, it's already implemented, sorry. So anyway, this is, both has to be implemented. But notice that person and annoying, they both have the same thing that you wanna implement, so they're kinda overlapping, right? Uh, let's say if this was to annoy students, well now it's gonna force you to implement annoy students, right? Implement annoy students. Sorry, I was confused for a second. Cool. Again, it's kind of enforcing rules, but inside of interface, we cannot implement anything. And everything else will be constants. Uh, sorry, constants. It will be statics. Cool. And why would you want to use one over the other? Well, a teacher could be annoying, but it doesn't mean he is annoying. A teacher is a person that could be annoying. And this makes more sense. So here, in this case, it would have one functionality, which would be to annoy or to, to, I don't know if I spelled annoy correctly, actually, to be, as I'm reading this, but annoy, and it, it's one function, it's not a being, it's not a person, it's not a, it's not, again, we're trying to give it English words, right, so that's the biggest problem, is we're trying to say it has that functionality, to be annoying but it is not annoying so so far you had a lot of teachers they're most likely not annoying and then you had me and you notice even though I'm a teacher just like everyone else I am annoying comparatively to them right and the cool part about this is we could have many no sir you are not annoying sir thank you very much but the point is we uh, <laughs> The point is, is we have that functionality and it's not who we are. You can think of it that way. Or another, uh, another thing you could notice is we could have multiple, in, uh, multiple not inheritance, but multiple implementations. So we could implement annoying, we could implement a few other stuff, such as, we're gonna see this sooner or later, uh, such as if it's a clickable something, right? If we look at all the stuff that's here, I don't know if we shows so if it's a runnable so this is if you want to have multiple threads we could have multiple of these being part of our teacher class which defines teacher overall but it's not a teacher right it's I don't know how to say this better <laughs> so th this is something we'll, we'll do during practice uh, over over the time we're gonna see it and understand this but just note the the two different uh, different things that we saw here um, one is abstraction and the other one is where is it interface and again this will allow us to do polymorphism which we already did so the polymorphism would be let's say again let, let, let's just keep modifying this polymorphism runtime here so depending on his selection Right, depending on the selection, so I'm gonna say if, because not both of them are implementing this, so we could say if uh, selected creation is instance of teacher, then you know what, we could typecast it. We could put it inside annoying. So annoying, we said select. 
selected creation, right? And now we have access to annoying dot annoy, right? And again, this is not the best example here, but the fact is we could do the same thing we've been doing with polymorphism all the time. Not knowing what's coming in, but because they're implementing annoying, they're gonna have this function, which is annoying. Even though I can't see any of the other functions, there's one function I know for a fact it has is annoying. And this is what they use inside Android as we were looking at it, right? Let me just run it one more time. Is they don't know how you're gonna build, uh, just give me a second. They don't know how you're gonna build your activity and the activity inside, let me go full screen actually. They don't know how you're gonna build your application, okay? Because these activities are screens and whatnot. The only thing they know for a fact is you're gonna be implementing some functionalities such as on create. And the fact, the, the thing about app compat, this thing that they're extending, it's abstract because it has some stuff that you overwrite and it has some stuff that you could use without well it has some stuff that has been implemented in here right and if i erase this it would well in this case it won't give me an error because this is probably a normal class uh, yeah it's a normal class but if you look over here into these two right this one is a interface if we click on it we go on it nothing is implemented but it's forcing you to implement on support action mode started on support action mode finish, on Windows starting support action mode, whatever they are, we gotta read the description. And you'll notice they're also extending fragment activity because we can only extend one thing. So if you click on this, again, it's a normal class, it extends even further. Notice now it implements two different things, okay? Anyway, you're gonna see this is gonna become more used throughout the semester. We're gonna going to be doing more stuff with interfaces and libraries and so forth. Cool. Any questions? And I know that wasn't the best example or any definition, I would say. But uh, with samples, we're going to understand this better. And I should have prepared something and rather than randomly creating examples. <laughs> OK. So this is the end of review. Congratulations. We took a bit more time than usual. Uh, the fact being, uh, I'm hoping all this time used for this is going to help us build something better. Uh, let's stop the recording, actually.